Welcome to the sixth lesson of this course. In this lesson, we are going to use a collection that we created in the previous lesson and make single pages for every category item. We are then going to list all the blog items inside those pages and filter the blogs that contain the same category on a same page. Okay, for this video, we're going to switch to a completely new page that we haven't used yet. It's called category page. If I open it, you will see that it's pretty much the same as our main blog page, but the functionality of this page is going to be completely different. We want this page to be a dynamic page, so every single category item from the previous collection that we created will have its own page, just as we made with the blog single page. And on every single category page, we want to list all the items that contains same category. Okay, so to begin with, we need to set a source on this page just as we did for our blog single page. So the process is the same. Let's hit the right click on our category page, hit the source and select the collection that we need. For this example, we need our category collection. So let's select it, hit confirm, and now we can connect everything we need here. So let's begin with the title here. So let's choose it, go to the settings, open the variable menu, open the page dropdown, data dropdown and select a name variable. Let's hit save and we can now proceed and list all the items from our blog collection down below. So for that, let's select this tag here, go to the advanced, connect the source to pull from the blog collection. Here, let's input a key to be blog, hit save and now let's connect the image we need to go to the settings for this one open the variable pop-up open the block drop down and we need a cover select file hit save and now we need to connect a name so again the process is the same open the block drop down select name variable this time and now we need to connect a let me zoom in out a little bit to connect a category so open the variable open the block drop down and find a category we need a name variable so let's hit save and now we have connected everything down below so now we can connect these articles here to lead to their specific pages so let's select this link tag go to the settings into the page drop down i'm going to select blog single page then into the advanced Connect the slug variable just as we did before. Open the variable pop up, open the black drop down, and select the slug variable. Hit the save and hit the save again, and we are done here. Now, what we want to do here, since all the items from the block collection are listed down below now, we want to filter only the ones that contain this category on which page we are currently. So for example, on this page, affordable decor, we want to show only this article here, since, let me zoom in, it contains that category and this article here, because it also contains that category. And those are, those are the only two articles that you want to filter here. So for example, if I go up here, open this drop down, and let's switch to this page, as you can see, we have switched to the room makeovers category page. And on this page, we only want to show this article here, since this is the only article that contains this category. Okay, so let's go back to this page here. And let me explain you how this filtering method is going to look like. To explain you that, let me select this paragraph here, go to the settings here, open the page, open the data, and take this ID value. Let's hit the save. And you can see that ID of this affordable decor page is 9729. Now, if I go and switch to a different page, you will see that it's here 9728. So every single page here has its unique ID. And we are going to use this ID to filter all the items below. So let's again go back to this page and let's let's disconnect this value from here. And now let's select the tag which holds our source here and let's talk about this filters option. If you click, click on a plus icon here, you will get this pop-up on which you can set a filtering condition. So basically what we need is to open this drop-down and select a 
category field from our blog collection. So let's select it. Here into the operator, you have a bunch of different options. For this example, we need this includes. So let's select it. And here we need to open our variable pop up and we need to open a page drop down. Don't make a mistake and open a blog drop down. We don't need that. We need ID from the page. We don't need a ID from a blog item. So once the page drop down is opened, let's open data and let's select the ID value here. Hit save, click add. And once I click on the save button, you will see that all the items that contain affordable decor category has been filtered on this page here. So let's switch our page to, for example, room makeovers, and you will see that the article that contains a room makeovers category has been filtered on the room makeovers category page. And this filtering method that we set on our items here will work dynamically for every single category page here. So let's go back to our affordable decor page. And now let's make these dynamic pages that we created actually accessible on the live site. So for that, we're going to transition to our main blog page here. And for this example, I'm going to hide this item here so you don't get confused and display this one, which I previously created. So basically, this is going to be our dynamic navbar for our category pages. As you can see, we have two different link tags on our navbar here. This one is going to be the static link, which will always lead to the main blog page or on this page we are currently on. This one here is going to be a dynamic link tag, which will lead to our category pages. So basically, since this one is going to be static, let's connect it to lead to our main blog page. And for this one, let's go to the advanced, open the source drop down, and we want to set a category collection on this tag. We can immediately hit the save button and you will see that this link is duplicated five times. That is the number of items we have in our category collection. Now let's connect the names for our links here. Let's go to settings tab, open the variable pop up, open the value drop down and select the name. Hit the save and you can see that our names for our links are now dynamically pulled from the category collection. Now we can actually proceed and link all these category links to lead to their specific pages. First of all, as we did before, we need to go to the pages. And as we did for the blog single page, when we inputted this custom route, we need to do the same for the category page. But we can just do it, do it like this, just type in colon slug like this because it will get in the conflict with our blog single page. But how can we resolve this? We can simply add another slash and type in category here. So our route here for the category page won't be identical as the one in the blog single page. And that way we can avoid a conflict in linking. So let's hit enter here. Now we can get back here, select our link tag, go to the settings. And for the page, we need to set it to lead to a category single page. So let's select our category page. Now we need to go to the advanced, scroll a little bit down. And as if we did before, we need to open this slug variable, open the variable pop up, open the value drop down and select a slug value. Now let's hit save, hit save again, and let's hit save here. And now our links here shall lead to their pages. And let's test that out. Let's go into the preview mode. And now if I click on affordable decor, you will see that I'm at the category affordable decor page. Now let's get back and let's try that with trends and styles. And as you can see, I'm here at the trends and styles category page. Now it would be nice if we had that navigation bar at the category single page here as well, so we can quickly switch between the category single pages. So let's close the preview mode and let's do that. So let's copy this whole structure, go to the category page and let's firstly hide this structure here, just as we did at our main blog page. And let's paste down. We don't need it here. So let's organize this. Okay, so it shall look like this. And as you can see, 
This structure here has been broken. That's because I've copied the structure that has source connected to it. And all I have to do now is just select the tag that was connected to the source, go to the advanced and reconnect the source. Hit the save and every single variable will be automatically connected. You just need to reconnect the source. And if you're working with the links, you would need to reconnect the link as well. So let's again select our category single page, go to the advanced and reconnect the slug as well. So value drop down and slag variable, hit save, save and save here as well. And now let's reconnect our static link here. So let's select it, go to the settings, open the page of the drop down and select the blog page. And everything shall work on these pages as well. So let's test that out. But before we test our links, I want you to take a look at this URL here, which is the URL for our category pages. You can see this route which says slash blog slash category slash the URL of our category page. And you can actually see this path that we inputted in our route slash category then slash colon slug. And that's how your URL will look like for your category pages. Now let's proceed and test our links below. So as you can see, we are at the affordable decor page. Let's try these trends and styles. And as you can see, our links work properly. Now let's go back and let's add active state to our links. I'm going to select my link tag. And as you can see, I have this article category class applied to it. I have this class applied to every single link in this number, as you can see. And we also have that class on these links on the blog page as well. So I'm going to select this class, open the instance drop down, open the state and select the active. Let's hit create and let's edit this instance here. So let's do something basic like let's switch the background from white to be black and the text from black to be white. And let's test that out. Let's go to the preview mode. And as you can see, we are currently on the blog single page. You can see that our all blogs link is highlighted. If I click on the echo friendly, you will see that this page here is highlighted and that will work for every single link in our navbar. Okay, so now let's connect the last category links and that will be this small labels inside our cards. We are going to turn this into a links which will lead to the category single pages. And if I open this article, we will as well make this into a link which will again lead to its specific category page. So let's close the preview mode and let's first of all proceed with these links here. And as you can notice, these links are nested inside the other links. And as some of you may know, when you nest links inside of links, that will break everything. But if you want to nest links inside of links, you need to set one object inside your link and then nest your second link inside the object and everything will work smoothly. So now let's proceed with our current job. Let's select this link tag, go to the settings and select a category single page. Then we need to go to the advanced and connect the slug variable. Open the variable pop-up here open the block drop down and this time we won't select this slug from the block drop down. We would need to scroll down a little bit, find this category, open the drop down and select the slug from the category drop down. That's because we want slug from the category and not from the blog collection. So let's hit the save, save again and let's test that out into the preview mode. So if I scroll down here and click at this affordable decor, you will see that I am at the category page affordable decor. So now let's again close the preview mode and now let's visit our blog single page and connect this link as well. So let's select this link tag, go to the settings, open page drop down, select category single page, then again go to the advanced and reconnect the slug variable. Let's select the page, data, and again we need a category drop down, open it and select a slag variable here. So let's hit save, let's hit save again. If I open the preview mode, you will see that as I click here, I will get to my affordable decor category single page. Okay, enough with the linking, let's get out of our preview mode 
And now let's get to our category single page and let's connect this description text here. So let's go back again to our collection, open the settings for our category collection and let's add a new section. Let's call it category data, for example. It doesn't really matter. Hit confirm. Let's add another text field. Let's call it a description. Hit confirm. We don't need anything here. Hit save. Finish editing. Let's open our affordable decor item and let's add a description to it. I will already have it prepared, so I'll just paste it down. Let's hit finish editing. Let's get outside of the collection. And now let's select this paragraph, go to the settings, open the variable pop up, open the page drop down, data, and then find a description field. Here it is. Hit the save button. And as you can see, we have added a new field inside our category collection and successfully pulled that content on our actual category page. We came to the end of our sixth lesson. We saw how can we filter all the blog items which contains a same category on a specific category page. I'll be seeing you in the next lesson.